You may be aware that the version 24 release was the opportunity for Broadcom to redesign atomic automation and provide universal language support to better handle cross-character set operations. This comes with several requirements and caveats. It means that all atomic databases must be UTF-8 encoded before being upgraded to version 24. If a database is not using UTF-8, it cannot host 24 data. In most cases, we'll need to transpose the data to a new database and then recoded prior to the version 24 upgrade per se. This will require a bit of work, which unfortunately cannot be handled with existing tools. dbload is certainly needed to convert the atomic data structures and assets from the prior version to 24. But before that can happen, a new database that uses UTF-8 has to be created for those atomic data assets to be transposed and recoded. This is a multi-step process, and so the zero-day upgrade is not able to handle this. As a matter of fact, ZDU is simply not a factor in the initial upgrade to 24. Thankfully, Broadcom has designed a tool that comes in the form of a pack containing a workflow to partially automate the recoding of the database. This module focuses on the procedure for upgrading Atomic. Then we offer additional modules that focus on the tool itself. In this video, we describe the broader process, where the tool fits, what it does, and how to run it in the overall sequence. We've stated this elsewhere, but it's worth repeating. The tool does not migrate the Atomic database from the prior version to 24. dbload does that. It performs two main actions. One, it transposes Atomic data from the existing source database to a new destination database. Two, it recodes the data. The UTF-8 migration of the Atomic database is essentially a transposition and recoding of the data in the same version. We currently have the prior version of the Atomic database, say version 21, hosted in Oracle SQL Server DB2. Note that we don't include Postgres databases, they're not impacted. We create a new empty database, which uses UTF-8, and call it the destination database. The procedure described in this video entails replicating the source data at the destination, recoding it in the process. The outcome is a UTF-8 encoded database in version 21, not version 24. Only then will we be in a position to run dbload to actually make it version 24. Broadcom has designed both a tool and a procedure to assist you, with several priorities in mind, namely preserving data integrity and minimizing downtime. Both are fully supported, which is a major advantage over standard data conversion tools provided by third-party vendors. The tool assumes several roles, namely managing and copying the data, and generating some SQL statements to encode the data at the destination. There are three basic run modes, Initial, which targets the entire set of historical data, Refresh, which only targets new data generated after Initial was completed, and Final, which generates the SQL statements. In reality, all three steps generate SQL statements, but those resulting from steps Initial and Refresh are executed directly by the tool by ways of the SQL agents. The tool also does one important thing, it creates the DB link the resource needed for the source and destination database to talk to each other so that the data can be copied. But you can either let the tool create the DB link for you, or you can have your DBA team do this, and we've provided the syntax and the documentation for each DB package. Finally, there are important factors to consider. First, you'll need to create the destination DB, in other words, an empty UTF-8 encoded database. You should also back up your source database. As for any major upgrade, you should practice, rehearse the entire upgrade several times, use test systems, and call on our support and service teams to assist you with this procedure. The tool itself isn't particularly challenging, but the UTF-8 migration should be coordinated with the rest of the upgrade. When executed in production, it should go flawlessly. We strongly recommend asking for help. Finally, we need to stress how important maintenance is. You should have deployed a comprehensive maintenance workflow which involves deactivating executions and reorganizing, archiving, and purging old records. For a smooth migration and upgrade, it's absolutely vital to DB Reorg, Unload, and Archive all old historical records to minimize the volumes of processed data. This could mean hours instead of days while the tool is running, and minimal performance impacts while Atomic is still in production. The procedure has three steps which are carried out in sequence, but not necessarily one immediately after the other. These steps should be executed sequentially, but days or weeks can go by between steps 1, 2, and 3. There's no need to take production offline while data is copied with steps 1 and 2, initial and refresh. 
Step three final can also be performed while AE is processing, but production needs to cease immediately as soon as it completes. Your DBA team will then execute the SQL statements and you'll move forward with the remainder of the version 24 upgrade. The migration tool is an atomic workflow which requires a functioning AE. The first step is initial. It creates a temporary table in the source DB, generates the DB link, then replicates the oldest stable historical data from the source to the destination. This should run once. It copies potentially huge volumes of data and will take hours. You should be aware that we've done extensive testing on authentic production databases, and this process could take several days. You'll need to be patient. The second step is refresh, which runs after a completed initial. You can run it at any time and as frequently as needed. Refresh copies the delta segments, in other words, any new data generated since initial and not included in the original copy. The process will be much faster for obvious reasons. The third step is final. This generates the data copy and recoding SQL statements that Atomic Automation emails to the administrator. When final completes, you must shut down the AE to ensure data integrity. You're now in the downtime phase. You'll need to proceed swiftly with the rest of the upgrade. First, the DBA team executes the SQL statements. All remaining data is copied to the destination and indexes and constraints are created. The data in the destination database is recoded to UTF-8. Then you execute all the other steps you should be familiar with, DB load to convert the DB to version 24, and the upgrade of AE and AWI. When this is done, production resumes in version 24. Note that the sequence varies slightly if you're deploying to Oracle. The upgrade does not need to happen immediately. You could resume production with or without the upgrade. Here's the timeline. Green segments show AE active and production is uninterrupted. During the pink segments, AE is down and production has stopped. The initial step copies execution history, messages, and object audit to the destination database. Those are the AH, MELD, and XAO tables respectively. Here we're focusing on the oldest records and process monitoring records are excluded. The data time span is based on a variable called change logging days, which we're going to explain in a bit. Put plainly, Initial targets all records starting from presumably a few days back all the way to the inception of the Atomic instance, which is the bulk of the database. When initial completes, we can move on to refresh, which we can execute any time, as many times as needed. Production is still uninterrupted, and only data generated between each refresh will be included. Refresh only copies the deltas between each execution. The last step final should run after the final refresh, SQL statements are generated and emailed to you. To handle situations where email isn't working or SMTP isn't enabled, these statements are also copied to static var objects to make sure you get them. You shut down AE and perform the rest of the upgrade. Time is of the essence. The DBA team executes the SQL statements, which copy all remaining data, including executions and process monitoring records, objects, and system tables. They also encode the atomic data and the destination DB to UTF-8. When this is done, you perform the rest of the upgrade as described in the upgrade learning materials. Eventually, you'll restart the components and you'll be running version 24. Let's consider each step more closely. Initial creates a temporary table called UC underscore migration in the source database. Then it copies tables AH and its children as well as MELD and XAO to the destination DB. Records actively tied to process monitoring are excluded. The tool will only copy data in a specific time interval defined by two dates, starting with the oldest records and ending yesterday at the latest. Initial runs two queries to determine two date values, AHIDNR start and AHIDNR end. End is easy, it's the oldest data. This is the reason we recommend running maintenance, because it could potentially go back decades. Start is trickier. It's defined as any data older than today, with an offset in days set by the UC system settings variable, change logging days. This variable isn't specific to the migration. It normally sets the rotation of logs. Set it to say five, and the AE logs are rotated every five days. For us, it also sets AHIDNR starts. 5 means the value is the current date minus 5 days. In our example, any data between start and end is in green and included in the initial copy. Anything in white is not. Initial will invariably take several hours and have performance impacts, 
which is why cleaning out the database and purging and archiving are so important. Also, you should give careful consideration to resetting change logging days to a smaller value, say 1. This means refresh will include more of the recent data. Note that initial creates the DB link between the source and the destination. You may need an internal exception to allow this, and we've provided the syntax, which is also in the documentation. Refresh is straightforward. It executes the same process against the same data types, but only includes records that were generated since completion of initial. Refresh will be much quicker than initial, and runtime will vary with generated volumes, frequency of execution, the network, system resources, and a few more things. You can refresh as many times as you want, as often as you want. Start and end dates will shift forward in time. Final generate SQL statements and emails them to you. You shut down AE, execute the statements, and proceed with the rest of the upgrade. DB load, copy the AE files, recreate AWI, and so forth.